password. Yes. Okay, great. You're connected? Yep. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Welcome to another episode of Genuine Conversations. This is a podcast for shattering your limiting beliefs and living an empowered life. Today's guest is Puppy Sai or Tai. My apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Please join me in welcoming her to today's episode. Welcome, Puppy. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're most welcome. I'm so grateful that I was able to connect with you recently. And it was through that conversation that I was able to hear more about you and your journey. And, you know, we had just met recently. However, it was through that conversation. And I just know that um, today I would like you to share your story with my listeners, as I think um, there are many lessons and opportunities to do things differently that will come to light during our conversation today. Mm -hmm. And so without further ado, let's chat. Yeah. First off, can you tell us a little bit about you and your journey? Yeah, sure. So I, I, I was born and grew up in Taiwan. And then I came to the United States for college. And then after I graduate, I stay and work until this day. So yeah, my journey is a bit weird. <laughs> I would <laughs> describe it. Mm -hmm. It's not conventional. So I was attending a university in Taiwan actually. And then I had a serious depression. <laughs> so I took a pause mm -hmm. and then I came to the United States to study at a community college and realize, oh, I really love the educational system here. Mm -hmm. So I went on to a uh, regular university to finish my degree. And yeah, so it's really, I would say unconventional in some way. And now I, you know, after almost three years of working in data, I mm -hmm. changed to product management. Ooh, yeah, mm, that must have been a big leap for you. Yeah, I it, it was scary because it's really hard mm -hmm. for product world. Most companies or most teams only want to have you know fresh graduates who are just out of college, so they are moldable, or they want to have someone who has years of product experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been trying you know, to learn and make the change. And then, yeah, now I join a nonprofit as their first and only product officer. Oh, so wow. yeah, it's a great opportunity because they, you know, didn't have any product team or product person and they have been giving me a lot of autonomy mm. to learn, to grow, and then to help them build the things that they need. Ooh, ooh, and I know there's more to that story in there. And so before we start diving deeper into that, Puppy, can you take mm -hmm. us back to what was it like for you growing up? Uh, what, what was the what? Sorry. What was it like for you growing up? Yeah, so it's kind of mixed feelings. Um, my parents are not, we're not getting along well until I left home, <laughs> you know, go to college. So mm -hmm. it was kind of unfortunate that I didn't see their best selves mm -hmm. when they are with each other. I mean, they are happy now. I'm happy for them. But when I was young, it was really hard for me to, you know, just stay at home and witness their shaky marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I mean, since early on, I knew my mom should be a career type person, but instead she stay home to, you know, take care of my brother and I, and I can tell she is not entirely happy with that. Mm -hmm. I know she has 
you know, the power, the ambition to do something great for herself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she got depression, and it was hard to you know watch her feeling trapped in her marriage and at home. Mm -hmm. But I mean, after you know I I'm older, I left home. I encourage her to you know start doing side project or something that she really likes, and yeah, she became happier, and she's off you know the depression medication. So I'm really happy for her. Oh my gosh,、yeah. that's a great story. So tell me, you know, you were growing up around a mother who was、um, had at times depression.、Mm-hmm. What was that? What was life like for you when she was feeling that way? What was? How did you manage to work through that? Yeah. So I guess when I was little,、mm-hmm. I tried to avoid. Any kind of you know depressing feeling,、mm-hmm. so I would either you know enjoy getting out of home and go to school, and I try to stay at school as long as possible. It,、right. yeah, I I didn't know how to you know deal with that, so I I would just avoid and escape.、Mm-hmm. But when I grew older, I realized okay, it's not something I can really escape from. I have to face it. And deal with it; otherwise, it's not going to get better.、Mm. So I started to, you know, talk to my mom. I will accompany her, try to make her feel better, and yeah, I keep encouraging her to, you know, do something for yourself.、Mm-hmm. You are not trapped at home. You know, when we are at schools, you have a lot of time. You can hang out with friends, read a new book, or go to the There, there are some local community schools where you can learn new craft or something like that, and I keep encouraging her to, you know, go back to the society to, you know, start to have your life again. And she did.、Mm-hmm. And after years of gaining back her power, she is much happier and much better. I, I don't want to take credit for that, but I really think, you know. It's a big turning point when I stop escaping and then start facing、mm. what she's feeling and then how that affects me.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, tell us:、um, is there a time in your life where you too faced a, a challenge? And if so, w- what was that challenge? Yeah. So <laughs> there are many challenges, actually. And I think one of the biggest、um, turning point is when I had I, I was diagnosed with depression,、mm. and that diagnosis happened after I attempted suicide.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was a big alarming moment because I didn't know I have it, and then that was until I was. You know, on the rooftop, almost to jump off, and then I realized, okay, this is not going, you know, well. It, it's actually really bad. So I step back, and then rush to the therapy center or something,、mm-hmm. and that's when I start to have this long journey of dealing with depression, anxiety, and all other stuff.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow! Thank you for sharing that with us. I'm sure that was a very dark time in your life. You said you were on the edge, and you were able to talk yourself out of that. You were able to change your mind. How did you do that? That that's actually, and kind of an opposite.、Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that I was. At the age, I just you know kind of come back and realize, oh, what am I doing here?、Wow. It's like yeah, my body automatically bring me to that rooftop, and then I suddenly you know like wake up、mm-hmm. and then say, oh my god, I I shouldn't be doing this,、mm-hmm. even though I still want to, I shouldn't. So yeah, it 
it was fortunate the therapy center was you know near that rooftop so I just you know try to stay sane and bring myself there and then just tell someone okay I I was just trying to kill myself I don't know what's going on with me Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah so yeah I, I don't know maybe a part of me don't want to do it but then a bigger part of me kind of it's kind of an autopilot that wants to kill myself right yes and well you hit on something that's um, that I really wanted to explore. And that was the difference between that autopilot and that awareness. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like at some point there was this awareness, this Mm -hmm. opening up of the mind. And, and then, then you took yourself to a therapist and then what? Yeah. And then, I I mean, it's a center inside my high school so they call my mom and my mom took me to a psychiatrist and then I was immediately put on medication and yeah I then stay at home for the entire year of my uh, senior year in high school Mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah I, I actually don't have much memory during that year it's really blurry for me it's like I'm always so drowsy I'm always sleeping either you know sleeping taking medicine eat some food or and then go back to sleep until I don't know I become I I wasn't happier so the way you know depression antidepressant work is just try to balance the brain chemical but I wasn't feeling happy. I just feel, okay, I'm not, I'm not depressed, but I'm not feeling anything either. It just oh, wow. numb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And so when we're numb, we're kind of asleep to mm-hmm. what's going on to maybe who we are and what we want. And so yeah. there was a moment when you were able to wake up. Do you remember mm-hmm. what that was? I think that was before I went to the college in Taiwan. So it's like, okay, I need to have a new life. Every one of my classmates are, you know, attending university. And then, yeah, I I feel like I don't want to be left out. Mm -hmm. So I also took the university entrance exam. I applied to school. I didn't got in. Um, got admitted by my dream school but I mean it was okay so I went there but then it still it still keep coming back the depression mm-hmm. despite you know taking the medicine regularly it still come back and come back and then for the first semester in Taiwan I collapsed I wow. still yeah couldn't handle that well so mm-hmm. I took a break from that place and then went back home. And my mom, you know, after I encouraged her for so many years, she told me maybe you should, you know, change a different environment. Mm-hmm. She, because she knew I really like um, the United States. I, I've been here for summer school in the past. Okay. So she said, why not just, you know, take a break. Don't think about you know, all the university pressure, all that stuff. Just think of it as a, like a vacation. And then I say, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, maybe it's time to, you know, change the environment. Mm-hmm. So I went to Seattle for my community college and it turned out, wow, I am so passionate. I'm still so passionate about learning. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the culture was so open-minded, so diverse and that's when I realized okay I can be happy again (laughs) oh wow that's a great story so it really our environment really plays a role Mm -hmm. in whether in our happiness um I think I know uh, even for myself when I'm in a toxic environment I'm not I can't be myself 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's yeah. exhausting, right? When we have to hide who we are and yeah. not bring our authenticity to the mm-hmm. surface. Yeah. You yeah. know, wearing that mask is heavy mm. and you forgot how to smell, smile. You forgot mm-hmm. how to, you know, have a really true facial expression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, once you take off the mask, it you get so much happier and then you realize, okay, they, you don't want to put that mask back anymore. Right. So tell me a little bit about that. Do you feel there was a time in your life where you were really able to take that mask off? Yeah, I mean, because uh, since I was about five or six, years old I knew I liked girls I never had the you know that special feelings for men and I mean in Taiwan it's not so conservative but it's not you know very very open about homosexuality either Mm -hmm. so for a long time I just try to avoid talking about that Mm -hmm. yeah and then after I go to Seattle, it's such a, I think they call it, they describe it as like a hippie, you know, city. And then, yeah, I live on Capitol Hill where, you know, there's a huge gay community. And that's the first time in my life realizing, oh, you can actually live like that. You don't have to hide. You can, you know, show your rainbow on the street anywhere. And everybody is cool with it. They don't care who you are. You just have to be yourself. And then nobody cares. Nobody, nobody judge. That, that's the first time I feel like, oh, wow, you don't have to care. <laughs> wow, I got goosebumps just hearing about that, right? Yeah. The excitement behind that. Because you mm-hmm. were saying that for a long time, you didn't feel like you could be yourself in society. And so it just brings me joy to hear that you found your tribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finding our tribe is so important, especially um, as minorities and as women who are Mm -hmm. underrepresented in the world. And well, you know, it just segues into, we just, you know, yesterday through the news heard about this decision being made in America mm-hmm. that is affecting a lot of women today. And yeah. I'm just curious if you might have something that, what are your thoughts about the decision that was made yesterday in the United States at yeah, the it, court level, right? Yeah, it not surprised. Mm. You know, o- mm-hmm. over the past two years, seeing how some people react to the mask mandate or the vaccination, you see a majority of people, they are not actually kind and they don't really have what it means as humanity. Mm. So it's not a surprise, but it makes me so angry, so sad and so fearful for, not only for myself. I I mean, my partner and I, we don't want to have kids at all, but we have so many female friends. We have mothers, we have, you know, cousins. We have so many women that living in this world. Mm -hmm. We cannot, you know, separate I mean, in a sense, we are individuals, but in another sense, we are all connected as women. So that impact women and, you know, the husbands, the brothers, the daughters. Yeah, it it just impacts everyone on a certain level. And it's sad. I don't know. I think I'm I'm (laughs) mumbling here, but yeah it just so I have no words I cried myself to sleep last night and then yeah it I still feel the weight 
on my shoulder. Like someone is trying to take over your life. Someone try to control you. Mm. And that's, this is the first time ever, you know, since I come to the United States mm -hmm. that I feel, okay, this is not a free country. You know, mm -hmm. it bossed about having the freedom, stuff like that. But no, it seems that the freedom is defined by a certain people instead of the true freedom for everyone. Yes, yes. And I can't help but feel that the leadership, that the leadership is really still that control and demand and they are telling instead of showing. And mm -hmm. I feel like as a society, we have had enough of mm -hmm. being told how to do things and that mm -hmm. it's time for us to rise up as a collective society right? yeah. and, and to really stand up for ourselves as, as we've been doing for generations. This is not mm -hmm. new. Right. Yeah. And it's so disappointing for women's rights for as far as we've come to mm -hmm. see. I, I do. I see this as a setback for all the progress we've been making. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. I'm sad for my sisters who have had their choice taken mm -hmm. away from them now. Right. Yeah. And so, Puppy, it leads me to my next question, right? With what do you think we could be doing differently? You mean what should we do next or? Yes, what do you think we mm -hmm. can do next that can move us forward? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I mean, the number one thing is you know, for all eligible voters yes. in the United States to really make their voices heard. Mm. Because you have the right to vote. And if you don't, they are just going to take that for granted. And then, you know, one vote and then gone. Mm -hmm. And then other people will take over it and then they will do whatever they want. And then, yeah, that's it. You don't have any other choice. Mm -hmm. And then a second thing I think anyone can do is, you know, not, don't be silent. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, when facing issue like this, a lot of people would think, oh, it is political. It, I should not, you know, say that in public, but it is not a political issue. It is a human rights issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, some people think I mean, a, a lot of people say, oh, you cannot kill the baby. It is not right. But when these people are saying this, I, I, have, I had this question yesterday. Mm -hmm. Are these people actively doing anything, you know, to take care of the or orphans, in, you know, now living and breathing? Yes. Are they actively doing anything to support universal health care because a lot of the mothers when they are forced to give birth of these babies mm -hmm. they don't have any support and they might starve to death with their babies mm -hmm. so you know before saving the fetus are these people actually doing anything to take care of living humans if not, they don't have a right to, you know, save the fetus. It, it's just hypocritic. Yes. It, it's just not right. It, you can't, you know, oh, we want to save the fetus and then we are pro-life. No, you have to do everything. You can't choose this thing to do. You have to do everything. Take care of orphans, take care of the poor, support health care childcare even you know because not a lot of people can afford nannies and then go to work right yeah if you don't have this package mm -hmm. you are you should not you know support a full ban on abortion mm -hmm. this should be a full package right 
Yes. So I mean, yeah, sorry, I kind of drift apart from the question. So we should, you know, fight for women's rights, but also make sure all those packages um, policies are enacted too. Mm -hmm. Because banning abortion is like a bandage on a broken bone. Mm. It doesn't fix things. You have to take care of many other things too, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah I think that's the two biggest things jump out of my mind, you know, <laughs> vote and then make sure, you know, we have many other policies in place. Yes, and I'd even like to see at the leadership level more women at the table. I'd like to mm -hmm. see it more diverse and more inclusive so that we can have more representation of the people that are actually affected by the decisions that are being made, mm -hmm. right? I see an yeah. absence of women at that level where we can exert our power, right? And in fact, mm -hmm. yesterday's decision um, really left women feeling, I would think, powerless. Yeah. Right? That's so true. And that is not the direction that I want to go in for myself or my daughter, for my nieces, for my mm -hmm. cousins. And so I um, think it's important to have these conversations so that mm -hmm. we can educate others and 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 so others opinions and ideas are brought forward because it's when we are um willing to hear these different perspectives that we're that we there's a chance we can do things differently yeah. right mm -hmm. and so puppy is there a piece of advice that you would give to your younger self now that you have um, some experience behind mm -hmm. you and growing up in Taiwan and coming to the US and all mm -hmm. the experiences along your way, mm -hmm. dealing with depression, for an example, with your mom and then with yourself, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to your younger self? Ironically, this is actually an advice a lot of people had told me when I was young, but then now I want to give that to my younger self again. Love yourself first. If you do not accept and love yourself, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how many other people do, you still feel empty. Mm -hmm. There's still a void, a hole that mm -hmm. you cannot you can never be filled with um, outside love or validation or acceptance. You have to love and accept yourself first. Mm. Otherwise, nothing works to fill the void. Trust me, I, I've tried that yes. for so long when I was younger and nothing worked until I love and accept for who I am. Mm. Well, I love that. And I wondered if you could just share, how were you, what, what did you do? How were you able to shift and, and really pour that love into yourself? I think it, it was a weird timing. Mm -hmm. I just ended a seven or eight years long relationship it was a big toxic i mean i was toxic the other person was toxic mm -hmm. and after it finished there was a big a, a devastated a uh, time where i wanted to kill myself again <laughs> mm -hmm. and then for some reason oh that that was 2019 my mom actually visited me during the summer in New York. And then that suddenly hit me. I should not, you know, kill myself mm. because that, that's not worthy. I should not kill myself for someone who doesn't love me back 
or who hurt me so badly. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah, it, it yeah, it, it's like a you know enlightenment mm -hmm. moment. I suddenly realized, why would I do that? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it just not worth it. Wow. And then suddenly, starting from there, I, I didn't, you know, love or accept myself immediately. It's a, like a longer process after that. But, you know, afterwards, I try to go to the gym more. I try to have more quality time with myself. Mm -hmm. I try to eat better, mm -hmm. sleep better, you know, try to take care of my body first. And then as time goes on, my mind started to, you know, get clearer and I learned to love myself from that progress, from taking care of myself. I realized, okay, I'm not as bad as I thought myself right. would be. Yeah. And that slowly, slowly take me to a point where, oh my God, I am good. Mm. I love myself. It, mm. it, I shouldn't feel ashamed for loving myself because if I don't love myself, nobody would. Mm. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, is I know for me too, it's, it's kind of that conditioning of the past, mm -hmm. right? Where I was just conditioned to put others first and myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And it sounds like uh, many women have been conditioned to believe that to believe that and many of us have burnt ourselves out yeah right um just trying to make others happy putting mm -hmm. others before ourselves and mm -hmm. forgetting to put ourselves on the list if we make the list at all and mm -hmm. so i love how you talked about it's really coming to that realization that no one's going to save you mm -hmm. and that it's when you turn that love that that turn that love that you have for others inwards mm -hmm. and you start to meet your own needs that you suddenly start to discover that you're worthy of love Oh, I just love that story, puppy, which is why I was so excited to have you on this podcast today. And many you. of my listeners are really going to resonate with that story. And mm. so lastly, puppy, I'd like to ask you, what is your favorite self-care practice? Yeah, uh, I think it, it kind of varied uh, between different stages. In the past, I like... Um, you know, go to gym. It, it's not really self care. It's kind of like a self torture. <laughs> when I feel <laughs> depressed, I will, you know, add more weight and do more weight lifting. And if I'm still upset or depressed, I add more weight. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, it it makes me feel much better afterwards. But yeah, it's not really self care. It's a self torturing. <laughs> so I try to move away from that. You know, still doing a little bit of exercise but now I focus on reading books journaling and you know really spend time with my partner because you know with someone who loves you and supports you mm -hmm. you when you talk to them you can really generate that positive energy to them and then back to you so I think that so far is my top one self-care uh, routine is to make sure I spread that positive energy because when you do that um, but I, I mean you, you need to make sure it's not a you know negative person who doesn't appreciate any of your positivity mm -hmm. because wow. they will suck away your energy but you know it, if it's someone you love and loves you back you give them the positive energy it will bounce back double yeah, and that becomes my, you know, favorite self-care. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love that puppy. Because you know why I love it so much? It makes me think about what you talked about earlier, and that's kindness, right? Mm -hmm. And if we can get ourselves yeah. to a point where we're giving out more kindness, 
well, then we can expect more kindness back. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's one way that we can start to do things differently. You know, Mm -hmm. where we don't see enough of that kindness, that compassion and that empathy, especially Mm -hmm. at a time when our world is so divided. Yeah. Right. And so, um, wow, what a great conversation. I really um, wanted to thank you for taking the time to connect with us today with my listeners and to share your story with my audience. As I know, many of the lessons and opportunities that we talked about will resonate with my audience. And Mm -hmm. especially that key when you made at the end about self-love and Mm -hmm. how it really does start within, within us. And Mm -hmm. when we can love ourselves first, then we can show up in a loving way for others. Yeah, I oh, love it. Awesome. Thank you so much for Just this. Just before you know. we go, puppy, can you, can you tell us where can others find you? How can others connect with you? Oh, I'm really active on LinkedIn. So, you know, connect with me there. And I don't really use Facebook or Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, LinkedIn would be best. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited that we had this chance to connect today and share a genuine conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you.